Hello and welcome to the Peter O'Halloran Podcast Episode 2. So this week I've decided to hit on a topic that I do talk a lot about on social media, and that is the dreaded weighing scales. Well I tell you, evil, evil. I will also be getting into the variables that affect someone's weight and so on, trying to teach you the difference between fat and weight. I will also be speaking to Karen Holland from Sparrow Therapy and Wellness in Kilkenny, who is a psychotherapist and will be giving me her insight onto how weighing scales can have an impact on your mental health. So, let's kick into the podcast. The weighing scales is something that pops up for me on a weekly basis during client weigh-ins, um, where a client will automatically determine that they had a bad week just because of their weight, while disregarding their measurements completely. A lot of them will start off the email by saying, Oh, I had a bad week this Aww. week, when in actual fact, the measurements would show a totally different story. A client may be up weight or holding weight, but measurements around their hip and waist are dropping, which is a good indication of fat loss. But our generation has become so fixated on the scales and their weight, and when people become fixated on the scales and the number, it becomes a marker of their self-worth, which is a big problem, because if the scale shows a lower number, they feel better about themselves. Oh Lord, I feel great, it's great, isn't it? If the scales show a higher number, they feel like absolute crap and it can ruin their whole day. Their entire mood becomes dependent on a number. That stupid number that pops up can actually ruin someone's day and put them in a bad headspace. This is why constantly weighing yourself can lead to unhealthy obsessive eating and exercise habits. It's just, just stop. Because people start obsessing about any slight fluctuation that might not be related to how much you are eating or exercising. The scales can create like an artificial sense of confidence for some people, but it can also destroy confidence for others, especially if you've set specific weight loss goals. Fixating on weight can have such a negative impact on your mental and emotional well-being as well because it's causing unnecessary stress and it's so easy. Like, how many times have you been to a slimming club and Bridget No Clue tells you to hop on the scales and you're up weight? She puts the shame on you and you're probably down fat but just storing water. Bridget doesn't know this because she has no qualifications. Don't be a dick. Don't be uneducated like Bridget. You are an idiot! <laughs> but now you feel like crap and after, like a lot of people, just give up. So you walk out of the place thinking, lovely. I've just paid money to have Bridget no clue to press the life out of me and still no explanation as to why I'm up weight. See, what people need to understand is that weighing yourself does not take into account muscle mass, fluid retention, hormones and even period cycles for women. Not only does your weight change every day, it also changes at different times throughout a single day. So there's no point weighing yourself every day and definitely not multiple times a day. Like a scale is designed to measure weight. But there are so many changes in the human body daily that this will cause weight to fluctuate. So I'm going to explain to you why the scales said you gained or lost weight. So number one is the female menstrual cycle. Now, this is one issue I harp on a lot about in social media, and it's something that still to this day, a lot of women are unfamiliar with. So I keep going on about it. You know, a lot of women feel heavier, bigger at certain times of the month and that's because a woman's weight tends to fluctuate due to change in hormones. Hormone levels fluctuate throughout the 28 day cycle. These changes can lead to fluid retention, okay, water. Women will experience increased water and salt retention around this time, around their period. And this is due to an increase in a hormone called progesterone. Progesterone activates the hormone aldosterone which causes the kidneys to retain water and salt. Water retention then can lead to bloating, swelling, particularly around the abdomen, arms, legs, and this can give the appearance of weight gain, you know, and make your clothes feel a bit tighter, but however, it's just water retention. It does not signify fat gain. Some women can store up to four kilograms in fluid a week or up to a few days before their period. Now, think about that. Four kilos is a lot of fluid. Do you know what I mean? And having this mad dramatic shift in fluid will have an effect on the weighing scales and this is a big factor for a lot of women on a weight loss journey who weigh in well 
for two weeks and then the third week can't understand why their weight is up. This then can have a negative effect on a person's motivation as they say to themselves, well, I've done well all week and it's not showing up in the scales, so fuck it, I'm gonna get a takeaway. Or they give up on the diet altogether and binge. And it's only from a clear lack of understanding of what is actually going on with their body or it's Bridget No Clue telling them they done bad. When you might as well have a crow staring into a packet of crisps than listen to her advice. Don't know if you've seen, I had a video on social media where I get a weighing scales and I weigh myself. I drank two pounds of water and I stood back on the weighing scales and guess what? I was up two pounds. No, did I gain two pounds of fat in 30 seconds? No, I have two extra pounds of water in my body but the scales will only give me a unit of weight and not what is water or is fat. Which leads to my second reason why you would be up weight and so on and it's because what you've eaten or drank that day. That litre of water you just drank? Yep. That accounts for a kilogram of weight. The same goes for food which you have just eaten. The scales may simply fluctuate based on how much fluid you've drank that day or even how much you've eaten. Another reason why you might be retaining water is your diet is high in sodium. So salt. Like, I'm a whore for salt. Like, I put it on everything. People always comment, oh, do you want some dinner with your salt? Because of this though, I retain a lot of water. If your diet is full of salty foods, this will cause water retention, which will increase the number on the scales. You have not gained fat, but water. And I'm gonna keep saying that over and over again till it drills into your head, okay? Because you see, the body is trying to keep its salt water balance, so it retains water to do so. Another thing I see a lot of people doing though as well is they weigh themselves after a hard training session and think, oh look at that weight. But it's actually just fluid loss due to sweating. You know, I wrote an article before about fat leaves the body through the lungs, okay? Just like fuel burnt in an engine it leaves through the exhaust pipe. So sweat is not fat, sweat is only water that the body releases to cool you down. So the, the loss of water will show a drop on the scales, that's it. You know, once you drink again, water's back on. But equally, if you're training doing weights all week and the scales go up, this again is just water. Do you know what I mean? Like when you're doing weights, essentially tearing the muscles, they need to repair. They become inflamed and the muscles will store water as part of its recovery process. So the scales will show a rise in weight, water, not fat. Another thing that everyone must remember is that our muscles are just big storage dumps. The majority of food we eat, in particular carbohydrates, convert to glycogen and is stored in the muscles and the liver. The more glycogen storage you have, the heavier you will be because glycogen also makes the body store water. So we say for every gram of glycogen stored, your body stores three grams of water. The more muscle mass you have, the heavier it'll be. And the more muscle you have, the more glycogen you can store, which means you can store more water. So, you know what I mean? Weight versus fat. This is why like in the old day, low carb diets were such a big thing. And it was mainly due just to misinformation. Like people cut out carbs, stop providing the muscles with glycogen, they deplete glycogen stores and in doing so drop off all the water associated with glycogen. So while these numpties were thinking, oh Jesus, this is great, I lost five pounds in my first week. No, they didn't understand that they weren't losing fat but only dropping glycogen stores and water. And then they're a few weeks on low carb and they're like, zombies, they're lethargic, so all lying around like a sloth and good for nothing, so end up eating carbs. But then they have a big panic attack because a week later they notice that they've put on a few pounds on the weighing scales, shit themselves and go back to cutting carbs. It's like a vicious cycle. It's just not understanding that the weight back on is more than likely only glycogen and water. See, the scales bug me in so many ways and like the weighing scales have such a negative impact on our mental health and it can cause so many problems mentally. Now mental health is not really my area but joining me today is someone who specializes in that area. Karen Holland is a psychotherapist and the owner of Sparrow Therapy in Kilkenny. Now myself and Karen have met before at the start of the year. We were both speaking on the Sunday Grill on Beat 102, 103 with Ola Rappel about diet culture. And I just found her very knowledgeable in this area. So I'm delighted to have her back today to answer a few questions. All right. Hello, Karen. Um, thanks a million for coming on. Thanks, um, thanks for having me. Before we get into some questions, um, why don't you tell us a bit about yourself, who you are and what you do? 
Yeah, certainly. So um, my name is Karen Holland and I'm the owner of Spire Therapy and Wellness. Um, we have a clinic in Kilkenny, but we've actually been online for about two years now. So the change hasn't really been a, a new thing for us. Um, we actually are lucky enough to have a low cost clinic part of our clinic so people can just pay what they can afford at the time. There's no means testing or anything like that. Um, and then personally, um, in the last few years, I'm counseling about eight years, but um, in the last few years, I specified into eating disorders and disordered right. eating so that's where my passion would be Perfect. um but we in the clinic we deal with all types would you have seen in your practice a lot people developing issues or eating disorders dieting is one of the major causes of eating disorders yeah. um Wayne's get, and self-esteem is also a second one. Mm. So with self-esteem, it joined to that would be weighing skills. Um, that is the main issue. It's not the weighing skills. I think that is the problem. It's people's viewpoint of themselves before they step on it. Do you think though, like that, seeing judging themselves on a number, seeing this number, not understanding it though, has an effect on them? Oh, thousand percent. Yes, thousand percent. And I think it moves and moves so even when they do reach that goal figure that they've had initially it keeps getting pushed and pushed further either up or down regard depending on whether they want to lose or gain weight um i think when you start with a goal that is fixated on a number there's never an end point um and it just leads to destruction with their mental health um i mean weighing skills are kind of they're banned in our clinic yeah. um it's you know we're like flat out no to any weighing scales unless it's a doctor or in a clinic of some sort exactly because a lot of people don't know how to read the scales you see they're, they're, they're defining themselves on a number and they don't know what that number means it can lift their whole mood or drop their mood because you know, it could ruin yeah. their day just a number yeah. when scales have been around like for thousands of years you know what i mean but somewhere along the way humans started to say oh let's start measuring ourselves or weighing yeah. ourselves, you know? There's a big difference between weighing a piece of silver and weighing a human body. Like, the mass and the silver doesn't change. A human body goes through hundreds of changes a day, and that number mm. will go up and down. So, like, how would you get at that into your clients' heads about, like, you know, the scales, numbers will go up and down. Do not judge by these. Um, it is a long, frustrating road, um, but it can be done. Um, I think if... There's so many variables, so I, um, I can't give exactly what I do because everyone's yeah. individual. Oh, exactly. But yeah. there are four things that I always tend to do. So that would be, it's trusting, um, repeating, dissolving, and reframing. Mm -hmm. So trusting major part with um, people's relationship with weighing scales would be that they're actually, I find, maybe you might find this as well, people don't actually trust themselves to make a healthy choice. They don't trust that if they eat and make good choices throughout the week and they exercise, you know, move their body as much as they can, that their weight will change. They don't trust that. They have yeah. to have this proof. Um, so the first thing that I would focus on is actually teaching them to trust themselves without having either a measurement or whether it's measurement, like, you know, measuring your arms, waist, anything like that. So I'd start with that um, and just let the new, because for a lot of people, healthy eating and, um, you know, exercise is a completely foreign thing to them. So when they're yeah. starting, it's very overwhelming. Um, so moving on from that, we'd have reframing. So um, if somebody has in their head the question of why do you work out and their answer is i want to get leaner i would reframe that to i just want to go to the gym because it makes me feel xyz yeah. it makes yeah. me feel healthier you know that kind of way yeah, yeah um i'd have some clients that would not even be able to have a focus or a goal so it's a no focus um mindset so they exercise three days a week because that's what they do on those days. Yeah, yeah. And it would be that strict. Um, then with the dissolving, this is the really important part, um, would be looking into their environment, who they're surrounding themselves with, who they're talking to, and actually getting them, which is it's difficult, I understand it's difficult, but to actually get them to go talk to their friends and family and colleagues and say, I don't want to hear about diets anymore. Um, I wish you all the best, but I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to hear whether I look good or, you know, I don't want to hear it. Um, exactly, because everyone will always then, comment if you've lost weight, like, but they won't say it to your face if you put up weight, you know, they kind of sneakily say it to someone else. Like, why comment yeah. at all, you know? And then I think recently the most frustrating thing for me would be um, Adele. 
that she has lost quite a considerable amount of weight and everybody just has assumed that she is happy and yeah. we don't know that <laughs> weight does not equal contentment or happiness um so that's so dissolving all your relationship from the cycle of dieting is key um and then finally repeating so just keep repeating those yeah. steps what i'm talking about on this podcast is what i'm trying to get across to people as well the difference between weight and fat you know that's mm-hmm. which I, i'm talking about in a while in this it's like weight and fat are two different things you know weight is only a unit measure like you know um yeah. that's it like the, the fat is a substance like this yeah. weight cannot determine how much fat so this thing you stand on is not going to tell you how much fat you've lost it's just going to tell you how much water is in your body how much bone weighs how much skin you know it's everything like and it's just hard yeah. to get that into people's heads unfortunately like you said people need to see a result they need to see something to say oh, you're doing good i also think there's you know pe- there's an element that people think that they need to be motivated by punishment um yeah which it actually it's the opposite um you motivate yourself with encouragement yeah. um so i think some people that's why they gravitate towards the weighing scales i've had a lot of clients who would have shown signs of scale trauma right mm-hmm. now a lot of people don't even know what scale trauma is or even heard of it and some people don't think it's a thing but can you explain to us what scale trauma is so i don't think there's anybody who enjoys getting on a scales but scale trauma would be um way more extreme than that. Um, it's not an uncomfortable feeling, it's severe anxiety and stress. Um, mm. It can cause panic attacks. Um, not only stepping on a scale, but having somebody else know your weight yeah. would cause major anxiety. Um, it can get to the point where I've had clients that won't go get checkups or needed tests because they're afraid they're going to get weight crazy how such a small little thing can have such an effect on someone's psyche like but i suppose it's it's you're when we're babies the first thing people ask is what weight are they yeah a healthy weight Um, (laughs) and and then it just becomes this thing of like don't ever ask yeah exactly It's, it's crazy another thing that i wanted to ask is I read last year, I was reading the paper, and I remember, I think it was on holidays actually when I read it, and it was something that, um, about an Irish politician who suggested bringing weighing scales into the classroom and start weighing children. Um, and he thought that this would fight the obesity epidemic in children. Now, I, I went red when I seen this, you know, it infuriated me because I could see so many problems with this and affecting children. Um, what's your view on this? Do you think this could actually destroy a child's head? Yes. Um, not only individually, like, you know, secretly in, and maybe that they wouldn't even notice it until it was too late, maybe into adulthood, yeah. but also it would create a cycle of bullying that just in itself. Oh, 100%. Um, and on top of that, kids, they don't need to move as much as adults. They don't, they, they do move around quite a lot, especially primary school kids. Um, so it's the food is yeah. the most important yeah. part for a kid and that's not in their control. Yeah. Um, but definitely, there's no benefit. I don't think there's any benefit to weighing a kid in a school. And it's not going to fight any obesity. Like, if, if there's an overweight child and the step on the scale and he's been told in front of a classroom you're overweight, all it's going to do is induce bullying. And you could have a child who ha- doesn't have much fat on it. It could be just broad, stocky, you know, and he's going to yeah. be heavy as well, you know. And same with women. A lot of lectures I've done in some of the schools um, I'd ask some of the girls, like, how many skipped breakfast this morning? And the amount of hands that would go up is crazy. Like, you know, schools, mm-hmm. like, this is when they're young. You do not want to put this into their heads when they're that age. Exactly. And again, to going back to scale trauma, that would be a key thing that would affect them going into adulthood. Yeah. Um, that could be in a pinnacle moment um, where their whole ideal of dieting and the sense of self and what weight they're supposed to be or not supposed to be, that would just completely be changed forever. Another thing I want to ask you about is we hear a lot in the industry about um, disorders like uh, bulimia, body dysmorphia, um, anorexia, but a lot of people don't know what orthorexia is. Mm -hmm. Um, Can you tell us a bit about orthorexia? Yeah, so it is a new enough term. Um, I probably would have dealt with it um, even before I started um, my specific training into eating disorders, but it doesn't have a specific um, diagnosis yet. It's in a subcategory, but basically it is an over obsession with healthy foods or clean foods, pure foods. Um, 
aside from or along with this what can happen is there'll be an obsession with exercise but not necessarily there it's just something that sometimes comes along with it yeah um but they don't have to be together now this would be more than just wanting to help make healthy choices um this would be checking every single ingredient um it would get to the point where you could only have four or five categories of food that you would allow to allow in your body um they it would restrict you eating out it would isolate yourself from friends it causes quite a bit of distress um and while more other uh eating disorders that you mentioned there like binge eating disorder bulimia anorexia they're about quantity of food orthorexia is about quality of food usually do see it though they usually do go hand in hand with training usually the person who has this who has orthorexia is usually religiously in the gym if they miss a session they go absolutely nuts you know, like yeah. um, it, they're fixated on takeaways and not having a takeaway. They won't even go to dinner sometimes with, with their friends because yeah. there's no option for them to have. It's like because said, they don't have control. Exactly, yeah. And it is a lot of them are about control and that's it. What advice would you give someone who has developed any eating disorders or any uh, mental health issues from things like weighing scales or diets? Well, aside from speak to your GP and go to therapy, which obviously I am going to say that, yeah, yeah. Um, I would say that don't listen to the eating disorder voice. And anyone who doesn't have an eating disorder, you're not going to understand what I mean here. But if you're listening and you have one, you'll know. Don't listen to the eating disorder voice. It's not your friend. Every time you restrict or purge, it is going to tell you that you are the best in the world. Don't listen yeah. to it. Um, try and challenge it and reach out to people um the other side of it would be try and avoid the secrecy part of it there's an awful lot of secrecy with any disorder eating so either secret eating or exercising whatever it may be try and avoid that um even with one person just if you can be honest with one person um i'm not asking you to tell everybody and it can be difficult yeah, yeah. to tell family or people you're living with because then you're watched um so even if you tell just a close friend um but definitely work on your self-esteem um i'd maybe advise as well that if you are saying to yourself there's people worse than me there's mm. always going to be somebody worse than you oh yeah um so don't use that to be an indicator of how bad you are but as well as that for the only advice i can give if you are saying that you are okay and a lot of people are saying that you're not or maybe you have really bad days is to spend one entire day listing out the all the things that you say to yourself mm. and ask yourself would you actually say that to somebody else very good point and another thing like i know i'm kind of focusing on my questions here on client base but from a say, nutritionist or pt's pers perspective like on our side would you get a lot of pt's nutritionists into you over um you know like such a heavy weight on them from the whole industry you know they're trying to move on but the scales is creeping in all the time and there's so many things that keep popping up and they need they're like they're fighting a battle like do i continue with this or do my own thing or i get quite a lot of people that work in the health and fitness industry that would be coming in against people with disordered eating um and because especially with the scales um and people's i suppose obsession with it yeah, and yeah. their habit of using it and it being their indicator of success or failure um it can lead to burnout mm. so what i would say is that they monitor their own mental health as well and deal with the frustration that may come from that um, and if you have a belief that you don't want to use weighing scales don't just jump onto that because it's the easier option okay. literally don't jump onto it <laughs> Hi Karen, thanks a million for coming on. It was a pleasure and I hope to see you again sometime in the future. Thanks very much, Peter. No problem. Take it easy. Thanks. That was Karen. Now, Karen's practice is located in Kilkenny, but they also run an online service and it's called Sparrow Therapy and Wellness. So if you want to look her up, she's on Instagram as Sparrow Therapy and Wellness or sparrowtherapy.ie. So let's kick into a few more issues I have with the scales and fat loss. One of the main problems is people overestimate how much fat you can store or lose in a week. You know, someone says, Oh, I'm up a pound because I ate a Freddo bar last night. Go to fucking cop on, will you? A pound of actual fat would equate to approximately 3,500 calories. So let's say you're on a calorie deficit and you're eating 2,000 calories and your maintenance is 2,500 calories. 
So for a pound of fat to be stored, you would have to have eaten an extra 500 calories to bring you up to your maintenance and an extra three and a half thousand calories on top of that. So in essence, 4,000 calories extra on top of your diet. Somehow I don't think a fed up bar had 4,000 calories. Same goes for when I hear people say, oh, I only lost a pound this week. I'm very disappointed. This bugs the shit out of me. A pound of what? If someone has lost a pound of fat in a week, that is a brilliant result. That's a deficit of 500 calories over seven days. Seven by 500 is three and a half thousand calories, which equates to a pound of fat, which is excellent. The problem is everyone is fixated on the scales. Look at that show on TV, um, Operation Transformation. I think it's a great show and it does motivate people and it's a great idea. The only issue I have with it is the goals and the weigh-ins. Everything is based on weight and the goals are unrealistic for fat loss. If you can imagine me on that show, it's just, Peter, your target weight this week is five pounds. Five fucking pounds. For me to lose five pounds of fat, I would need to be in a caloric deficit of two and a half thousand calories a day. Two and a half thousand calories a day? Are you fucking kidding me? Like, So if my maintenance calories are three thousand calories, and a good deficit for me would be then minus five hundred calories, so to lose fat would be eat two and a half thousand calories a day instead of three thousand. But then they want me to lose five pounds of actual fat. The only way I can do that is by taking away another two and a half thousand calories. So I'm left with what? No calories a day. Well, of course I'm going to lose five pounds in a week living off water, fresh air and fucking high hopes. Another part that bugs me is they don't show the measurements on the show. These are way more important than the weight. You see it time and time again. So someone walks out, steps up on the scales, haven't hit their goal, boom instantly depressed but they might have lost inches which is clear indication of fat loss so the reason they are up is due to something else which is most likely water retention or due to hormones but they still have a face on them like a slapped arse because the scales didn't move if you're someone who is obsessing like that with scales i think you need to ask yourself um am i on a fat loss journey or a weight loss journey am i here to lose actual fat or just make a number on a machine drop every week because if you're going to base your results on the scales, your journey won't last very long because weight loss is not linear. It's not a straight line. It's like going down the stairs, taking two steps down and one step up. One week the numbers will drop, next might hold, next might drop again. Next week could shoot up by five pounds if you're a female and near your period. After that drops off again, but a lot of people don't make a pass that week. They see the numbers go up and say, well, fuck this for a pack of biscuits. So it really is a roller coaster. But the key is to understanding this and understanding how your body works and why your weight is changing. So we're coming to the end of the podcast now. So I'm going to give you my final note for today or something just to take away. OK, remember, the weighing scales only gives you weight of what is on it, the human body, which is made up of blood, fluid, muscle, bone, skin, heart, lungs, kidneys, I could go on and name all the organs, and fat. So out of everything that makes up your body weight, are you able to tell out of all that weight how much is fat or how much you've lost or gained? No, you can't. And if you can, you must be like Rain Man or something and we need to have a chat. So that's it for this week's podcast. I hope you can take away some nuggets of information and I've expanded your brain and knowledge. Um, quick plug of my own business before I finish. If you're interested in your own personalized nutrition programs with me, including Wayne's weekly with me online, you can check out the programs that I have available on my website, which is www.pptnutrition.com and click on programs. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter if you're not following me already. It's the same username, which is at Peter O'Halloran underscore. Once again, thanks for listening. Take care.